Oregon's only 10 o'clock news. And good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us for Fox News at 10. I'm Natasha Chugtai. The third and final presidential debate has wrapped up in New York, but the words of John McCain and Barack Obama are still ringing in voters' ears. Craig Boswell has the latest. John McCain's supporters wanted him to go on the offensive, and tonight he did. Barack Obama took him to task on the negative tone of the campaign. This was by far the most lively debate yet. John McCain and Barack Obama were asked to explain and justify the nasty tone of the campaign in recent weeks, and it did get personal on comments made by people attending their rallies. We're shouting, when my name came up, things like terrorist, and kill him, and that your running mate didn't mention. Someone yelled something at a rally. There's a lot of things that have been yelled at your rally, Senator Obama, that I'm not happy about either. In fact, some t-shirts that are very John, I, uh, I unacceptable. So the point is, the point is that I have repudiated every time someone's been out of line, whether they've been part of my campaign or not. And I will continue to do that. And McCain directly asked Obama to explain his relationship with 60s radical William Ayers. I don't care about an old washed up terrorist. But as Senator Clinton said in her debates with you, we need to know the full extent of that relationship. Mr. Ayers is not involved in my campaign. He uh, has never been involved in this campaign. And he will not advise me in the White House. The candidate sat face to face at a small table debating a large economic problem. And McCain attacked Obama for linking him to President Bush. Senator Obama, I am not President Bush. If you wanted to run against President Bush, you should have run four years ago. But when it comes to economic policies, uh, essentially what you are proposing is eight more years of the same thing. This may be the last time either of the candidates reached tens of millions of voters at one time. With just 20 days until the election, the candidates will now sprint from one battleground state to another. In Hempstead, New York, Craig Boswell, Fox News. And in Washington, President Bush says your tax dollars are not being used for a federal takeover of major banks. He met with his cabinet this morning to review the administration's latest move to solve the economic crisis, spending $250 billion in cash to buy stakes in some of the nation's biggest banks. Such that the government will be a passive investor. In other words, there won't be government officials sitting on the boards of private companies. I'm confident in the long run this economy will come back. Treasury Secretary Henry Paulson says this is the best use of some of the billions of taxpayer dollars involved in the bailout. Polls taken at this point in the campaign are fairly accurate in predicting election results, but University of Oregon political science professor Joseph Loon says polling is not an exact science. He says pollsters make assumptions based on patterns, for example, to determine who is likely to vote. There are wild cards introduced in this particular election, which I think do should make us approach polls with caution. And what are those wild cards? Race is an enormous factor here. Um, the huge number of new registrations across the country is another factor. Searchers say there's still no sign of a missing climber from Corvallis. About 50 people were on Mount Adams in Washington searching for Derek Mamoyak. Friends say he was an experienced climber, but had little equipment with him. Wild turkeys are causing a wild problem in the town of Philomath. Some residents say the birds are destroying their homes. And as Alyssa Harrington tells us, the city is considering some very extreme measures. Alyssa. Well, Natasha, the city's considering shooting at least half those turkeys. Now, some I talked to think that's pushing it way too far, and experts say it won't even solve the problem. Oh, I wouldn't mind one for Thanksgiving dinner. Is it a wild idea, or are these guys such a wild problem? Um, they like this hillside right here quite a bit. Some say there are just too many turkeys in the West Philomath Hills. Complaint volumes have gotten so high, turkey support is at the top of the city's website. And earlier this week, the city council voted to obtain a permit that would allow police to shoot to kill. There's at least 20, um, but there's 200 over the ridge. Just why are these birds ruffling so many feathers? Now, these guys might look harmless, but experts tell us they can actually do a lot of damage. Turkeys are big animals, and once they're fed, they just want to play and scratch. The whole flock will go up on somebody's roof and peck and rip the roofing off. They'll scratch up all the landscaping. Um, they can get aggressive and chase 
pets and people and children. And then, of course, with all that food, they poop all over your decks. Taylor says this all started because neighbors were leaving out food, but... Do you think the problem is so bad where some of the turkeys should be shot and killed? No, I do not. I mean, there's deer, there's other animals. We don't go around shooting them. I don't see why a police officer can get away with shooting in town unless it's life-threatening to somebody. And uh, these turkeys aren't going to kill anybody out here. Now, Taylor with ODFW says killing the birds would not kill the problem. The only way to get rid of these turkeys is to stop feeding them so they venture elsewhere. The city council is also going to bring up a feeding ban during one of their upcoming meetings. Natasha? Well, turkey hunting season actually started today. The turkeys you saw reside on city limits. They can only be legally hunted outside city limits on county property. Firefighters in California say the weather is finally cooperating, helping them beat back the flames of several wildfires. Temperatures are in the 90s, but winds are around 15 miles an hour, down from 40 miles an hour earlier this week. That said, numerous homes remain in danger as fires continue to burn near suburban Los Angeles. But let me tell you, when it comes to fighting fires and protecting the people, public safety is our number one priority. So we are not sparing one single dollar or dime on this. Dozens of homes are destroyed and at least two people have been killed by the flames. New information tonight on a boy in the Portland area who died after a football hit him in the chest during recess. Autopsy results show 11-year-old Austin Seagreve died of a heart attack. It happened yesterday at Palisades Elementary School in Lake Oswego. Witnesses say the fifth grader was playing flag football when a ball hit him. The boy collapsed immediately and could not breathe, and he later died at a local hospital. The tragedy has many wondering how a game of flag football could turn fatal. Molly Blancett reports. A time to run off that extra energy and let loose. Recess is when most kids leave their worries at their desk. Parents, too. Has your son ever been hurt during recess? Nope, never been hurt. So is there something we are missing in the wake of Tuesday's flag football death? Should parents worry that tragedy on the slide or jungle gym is just waiting to strike? Dr. Bruce Strimling says in rare cases, a blow with an object such as a football can trigger a heart attack even in perfectly healthy kids. Uh, we always worry about you know, the condition called commotio cordis, uh, which has had a lot of discussion recently, which are kids who receive a direct blow over the heart, which causes the heart to go into uh, fibrillation. That appears to be what happened to Austin Seagreve. Dr. Strimling tells me he sees a lot of cuts and bruises from recess and playground accidents, but nothing like what they saw in Lake Oswego. He adds no matter how many precautions parents take. Sometimes just terrible things happen that you can't prevent. I'm Molly Blancett reporting. Well, it may be hard to believe, but there's at least one gas station in Eugene where a gallon is less than $3 and you don't even need a membership card. This 76 station at Franklin and Walnut in East Eugene is selling regular gas for $2.99 a gallon. That's the cash price only, however. Paying with a credit card will cost you an extra 12 cents. Former First Lady Nancy Reagan is in the hospital with a fractured pelvis. Reagan, who's now 87 years old, fell at her home last week. She says she's in some pain but won't require surgery. Bottled water versus tap. One group says cost is the only difference. Barbara Hall has more. Open enrollment is approaching. It's the time of year employees make decisions on health and financial plans. The majority of workers do nothing and keep the same plan they picked last year. That's a huge mistake, say financial experts. Health care costs are up this year as well as out-of-pocket costs like co-pays. Consider putting money in a flexible spending account. That's tax-free earnings you can use toward medical costs. However, the number one thing you can do, experts say, is get disability insurance. If something happens to you, you'll still earn an income. Some researchers say bottled water isn't necessarily safer than tap. The nonprofit environmental working group analyzed 10 brands of bottled water. It says it found 38 chemicals, including bacteria, caffeine, fertilizer, metals, and industrial chemicals. The group's conclusion? It says bottled water is no less polluted than tap water, just way more expensive. But something to remember, all the brands tested meet federal health standards for drinking water. The bottled water industry says the report is, quote, alarmist, and says a wide range of chemicals are also found in tap water. For Consumer Watch, I'm Barbara Hall.